So this all starts when a photon of light hits our photosystem 2. Photosystem 2 being a complex of a lot of chlorophyll molecules in there. This excites the electrons, bumps them up in energy level, they get real excited, they bounce around. So this resonance energy moves around all the different chlorophylls in this photosystem, eventually makes it to the reaction center. That's where it finally ejects this electron to the first protein carrier of our uh, electron transport chain. So as we're losing electrons from photosystem 2, we replenish them from the splitting of water. So water splits to give its electrons, but in the process we also create oxygen gas, and then these hydrogen ions can be used to pump in the concentration gradient or be added later to NADPH. So as this electron bounces from protein to protein, the proteins here use a lot of that energy to pump hydrogen ions into the lumen of the thylakoid. This is creating a lot of our concentration gradients. Uh, so we have a lot of protons, hydrogen ions, inside a lot more than outside in the stroma. The electrons, losing a lot of their energy, make it to photosystem one. They get re-energized by a second photon. Same thing, they bounce around with resonance energy, get to the reaction center of photosystem one, and they're transferred to another carrier electron in the electron transport chain. Uh, it's transferred to another protein, and eventually it gets to NADP reductase, an enzyme that combines NADP plus a hydrogen ion that's free-floating in the stroma, and two electrons from this chain to form NADPH. That's one of the major uh, results, major products of the light-dependent reactions. Also, again, along this whole way, we're still pumping hydrogen ions from the stroma into the thylakoid interior creating a, a much heavier concentration gradient. This is where ATP synthase comes into play, a transmembrane protein that allows for the flow of these hydrogen ions from the inside of the lumen to the outside in the stroma. Again, hydrogen ions being very uh, polar particles, they can't readily pass through uh, the cell membrane. The only way through is through this channel protein, and they want to flow out because of diffusion. And as they do so, they act kind of as an effector molecule. So as they interact with this enzyme, it allows the enzyme to catalyze the reaction of creating ATP. So voila, we've created ATP and NADPH. And tomorrow we're going to focus on where these molecules are used to help create glucose. Yes. And so 